if the investor is savvy enough, then you look for alternative investments, meaning one of them could be cryptocurrencies. So not all people are well-versed in the use of cryptocurrencies. They, they feel that uh, uh, there are a lot of concerns for cryptocurrencies. So the other side is you can also help yourself in gold. Normally, people tend to hedge inflation with commodities. So basically, they invest in gold or other substitutes. Okay. Hi, everyone. We have Jonas Ravelas from Video, one of your favorites back in the show to talk about what's going on in the economy and the markets right now. So, Jonas, how are you? I'm good. Good afternoon. I'm so excited because no? the last time we talked, I think it was the end of 2020 or the start of 2021. And there were a lot of things that happened already in between that somehow some were a bit positive, some were a bit negative. But uh, it's nice to know what your insights are right now as we end the year as well. So let, let's start this off. What's happening in the global economy? What's your what's your thoughts on this? And that have, uh, massive, massive printing. Inflation is high in the US. Uh, gas prices are higher. Uh, well, it's nice to really talk about the, the global markets ahead. No? Uh, basically, I guess what we're seeing is more of a risk on. Uh, again, a rising tide lifts all boats. Now that the US uh, eventually has passed their uh, close to two trillion uh, fiscal stimulus, no? uh, which is already underway. So this has eventually created uh, a massive reversal of uh, activity. No? So their unemployment rate uh, from 6.1 is now at 4.8 percent. An unemployment rate of 5 percent means it's they're at full employment already. So that's actually a good sign. Uh, one of the things that they would be looking at right now is uh, what's next for the U.S. Fed. No? Despite, uh, as you said, no, the, the rising inflation, uh, the key idea really is to uh, look at the point where uh, we're now seeing uh, will the economy be able to bring all of these uh, uh, concerns and still keep the economy moving higher. So recently, the, the Fed statements have already highlighted that they're going to see um, uh, around mid-November or mid-December to be able to start the taper, meaning they will slowly take out the excess money that they've used to prop up the economy. So uh, that is the beginning of... Uh, the potential rise in rates, which could come as early as the fourth quarter of 2022 uh, and probably the latest would be early 2023. So the market is already looking at three hikes. But the markets, the financial markets, particularly the U.S. equities, have ignored inflation and eventually they've also ignored uh, the, the risk of rising prices. I guess they're looking at you know, the normalization as the U.S. economy has fully reopened amid the vaccinations. No? So this has eventually lifted most of the markets, which is good for the rest of sentiment. Uh, the other side is you have the rising global commodity prices. So what are these global commodity prices? Why are they rising? One is there's demand. The demand eventually is driven by winter is coming. They, they feel that it could be a colder winter. So if it is a colder winter, then for the, the prices of natural gas eventually went up. So chances are they're trying to look at another alternative instead of natural gas. That's why crude oil eventually uh, is now trading above $80. So from a technical perspective, uh, Oil, in general, whether you're talking about our Dubai crude or West Texas crude, the challenge of breaking above the $80 points to $100 per oh. barrel. So that's inflationary, right? Because uh, what is happening is that there's a shift in demand, plus there are supply disruptions, which are backlogs 
and could not be avoided because of COVID-related. Just like a few months ago, we've seen what happened in a disruption in the Suez uh, Panama Canal. No? Suez Canal, yeah. So, at the same time, in China, because of a holiday and a storm, uh, one of their busiest port, they had to keep the ships. So, there are these potential disruptions that uh, are currently occurring. No? So, this is also cost prices to be higher. Those are the challenges. Then, you add the one of China properties. So, this is still an ongoing uh, risk of event. But uh, the nice thing, this seems to be more uh, localized to China than uh, it is localized to uh, what's happening here in the rest of the world. No? It seems to be just focused on them. So, so far, things are still so good. Okay? So, when you look at it from that perspective, uh, it's still a risk on. The other side, of course, is that the dollar is getting better. Mainly because the, the prospects of higher interest rates means uh, an asset whose uh, expectations are interest rates to rise eventually tend to benefit. So the U.S. dollar is getting stronger. What, what's pushing markets higher is there's really a lot of liquidity. Uh, what happens when that's sapped out? Should that be a concern? Because that, that's what I see that's propping up equity markets, um, especially the U.S. Uh, there, that's actually one of the fears. no? Because once you start slowly withdrawing this this uh, these things, no, and, and and it's a very good point. You need to understand that equity, uh, fi- equity markets love Goldilocks, <laughs> not too cold, not too hot. So you, but what really makes the equity markets go up is really all driven by number one, uh, strong growth, and eventually you have low inflation, diba? But when you have strong growth and eventually high inflation, the tendency is that the economy appears to be too hot. And the tendency is uh, it's bad for equities. It's not a, a good level for equity. So the challenge there is that there could be a sooner or later, there could be uh, a sell-off in equities. When will that happen? I don't know. But it's nice to probably re- think about it that higher inflation will bring higher interest rates. Higher interest rates will eventually mean, uh, number one, higher costs and will eventually uh, attack the bottom line of companies. And that could eventually be bad for equity markets. Um, in, in line with that also, I want to I wanna get your thoughts on this, that uh, since there's printing and then there's a risk now that that could possibly happen also um what would you consider as a as a hedge for it a lot of people are, especially the the more traditional ones are are into gold still then you have another set of people that are pushing uh it should be bitcoin because of the limited printing that's happening in the us where do you stand uh in this as, as somehow a, a good a good store of value while all of this is going on as well i, I think at this point in time uh it will actually depend on the investor. If the investor is savvy enough, then you look for alternative investments, meaning one of them could be cryptocurrencies. So not all people are well-versed in the use of cryptocurrencies. They, they feel that uh, uh, there are a lot of concerns for cryptocurrencies. So the other side is you can also help yourself in gold, normally people tend to hedge inflation with commodities. So basically, they invest in gold or other substitutes. Now, the other way of doing it is just holding on currency. So historical evidence is when there is a risk of, uh, there's always a tendency to run to the dollar. So most of the time, people will eventually hold on to the U.S. dollar. And uh, over the last few months, this is what we saw. When there is a risk of people run to the dollar. And that is also creating a sideways to down movements for gold. 
as compared to other uh, metals, which has eventually gone up, gold has practically moved sideways and it's stuck there. I guess you're really seeing the the difference between the dollar and eventually you get to see the the gold. No? So they're they're really on a hand to hand combat, which is going to highlight uh, who is the stronger trend. Is it going to be the dollar or is it the rising commodities? Hmm. So that's something to think about. Given everything that we talked about, no, um, inflation, um, printing, and then um, economic activity in the U.S., uh, more people having jobs right now also. Uh, from a global perspective, when, when do you think everything will normalize back, no, uh, that we go back to uh, the, the, the path that we were, we were prior to this uh, pande- pandemic as well? Well, I guess from a, from a global perspective, developed economies will most likely recover faster. So most likely give them maybe 6 to 12 months. We'll probably see them uh, close to pre-pandemic levels. And this is what we eventually uh, are seeing in the U.S. economic numbers. As I said, March levels of 6.1 unemployment, they're now at 4.8. So at this point in time, they can really raise interest rates. What they're worried about is that uh, they've already highlighted that the, they're willing to allow the economy to uh, sort of get hotter, meaning allow growth to move up and at the same time allow inflation to head higher. So eventually, this is something that they need to watch uh, to ensure that you know it doesn't uh, stall the economy. So far, it seems that uh, inflation remains manageable at this time. So I think that's the good news. Now, the key factor really is uh, most of the impact of inflation is supply-driven. So this is not something that is demand-driven. So this is something that can be uh, addressed by non-monetary measures, meaning that's the reason why the government has lowered tax uh, uh more of the importation costs or tariffs for rice uh, and eventually imported pork.